Hey, hey, what's good, people? It's your boy Dev here. Oh, I thought I was playing. That's a gray hair. <laughs> it's your boy Dev here, man, from uh, Knockouts and Three Counts. And um, it's been a minute since I've done one of these, man, but uh, I felt like today was definitely warranted. Um, it's a crazy day right now going on in WWE. Um, actually, a crazy couple of days. Um, I know some of you guys know that the XFL season was was uh, suspended and the league is folded and they have filed for bankruptcy. And, uh, yeah, apparently WWE did have some money in XFL. And because of that bankruptcy, man, we're starting to see some of the, the trickle-down effects of that, man. And uh, it's a lot of wrestlers being, a lot of wrestlers and uh, staff and, and, and some some big names being released from WWE right now. And uh, <clears throat> I can't really look up every single name the list right now, but some of the people on that list, um, Zack Ryder, uh, Hawkins, Kurt Hawkins, he's been released. Um, Gallows and Anderson, they're gone. Um, Kurt Angle was released. Um, just, it's, it's crazy. I just found out Rusev. Rusev was released. Um, I haven't, I haven't confirmed it. I haven't seen it, you know, myself. But, uh, word is, is that Ember Moon's been released. Um. The, the Mike and Maria Canellis are gone. Sarah Logan, um, Drake Maverick, um, some of the producers that have been released. You got guys like Dave Finley, Mike Rotunda. Yeah, I, I just I just saw Rusev. Uh, yeah, I just saw that just a few seconds ago. Uh, Rusev is gone, but um, some of the producers, Dave Finley. Uh, Mike Rotunda, a.k.a. IRS, he's gone. Uh, Lance Storm. Um, <sighs> Shane Helms. Billy Kidman. Gone. Uh, referee Mike Kyoto, who's been with the company since 1989. Longer than some of you have been alive, man. Mike Kyoto's gone. Um, it's, it's it's crazy, man. It's just a lot going on in the, in the company right now. And... Uh, Aiden English, that's another name I just thought of. Um, Primo and Epico, No Way Jose. Uh, Eric Rowan, he's gone. Um, yeah. Leo Rush, Leo Rush is gone. Um, EC3, he's gone. Eric Young. What I don't get is that they bribe Florida now. They're doing this BS. Well, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> yes, they did bribe Florida. Yes, they, they def that, that definitely did happen. <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> as 50 Cent said, 50 Cent's character, uh, Kanan said on uh, Power, well, they did that shit. <laughs> but, yeah, they bribed Florida so that they can keep running. But what you got to realize is, is that with... The way they're going to run, they're going to be scaled back. Um, they're not running a lot. They're not running, you know, it's going to be live, but they're not running in front of a live audience, right? They're going to be bringing people in really only when their segments are up. So instead of needing an agent for every single match, you, you know, you can have agents, you know, double up. So if I can't think of who's an agent that's still there right now. Um, if Road Dog is the agent and I can't think of who else is still there. All right. I just forgot to use agents that I know that are there. So if Road Dog and Billy Kitman and Dave Finley are running, or, you know, agents and they're having their matches one after another, right? Because you can't have a lot of people around each other, they'll have Billy Kidman 
you know, do this match. Then they'll have uh, Lance Storm do the next match as an agent. Then they'll have Billy Kitman do the, the match after that. Then they'll go back to Lance Storm. So basically because you don't, you don't need all of these agents right now because you can't have that many people around each other, you kind of don't really need them on payroll. You're paying them kind of unnecessarily. And then a lot of the wrestlers that are being released are people that aren't getting on TV anyway, and they don't have storylines for them anyway. Um, I, and I'll be honest, I'll be, I'll be honest, I have not watched wrestling, I have not watched WWE consistently, oh, consistently since October, since the whole situation. But, yeah, I, I don't remember the last time I saw Primo and Epico. I didn't, honestly, I didn't know they were still with the company. Um, who knows when the last time Eric Young was on television? Who you know? They're not. You're not doing house shows, so you don't need all these wrestlers for house shows. If you're only doing television, you only need the people that you're going to put on television. Ryder and Hawkins weren't getting on TV. Uh, Primo and Epico weren't getting on TV. Uh, I think. I think someone said. I think I heard No Way Jose was on TV the other day, but he was in a squash match, so you really don't need him. So and I. I'm not having confirmed Ember Moon yet, but I'm hearing that Ember Moon was released. Um, I think she was she was out hurt. It's supposed to be coming back or waiting to come back. They didn't have a storyline for her yet, so if she's not on TV, you really don't need her there. You know what I'm saying? So right now they're, they're basically yeah, no way. <laughs> I don't even know if they're still doing main event, man. So for right now, man, you you don't need all these people because they're, if they're not on television, you really don't need them there. So they're letting them go and the funny thing is a couple of these people were guys that um were talking about that they wanted their releases anyway i know mike and maria canellas talked about that they wanted their release um there's a lot of talk about gallows and anderson wanting their release at one point um rusev is the one that i don't get man to me rusev yeah 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 that's what i'm saying Can't wait till my man dies and Triple H takes over the fix this shit. All right. So, what's up, man? So, I know Tony's on here, and me and Tony have had this discussion. Me and Tony have had this discussion about why I'm really doing this whole not watching WWE thing. I, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, yeah, I get to that in a minute, Anthony, about uh, AEW. But, you know, me, me and Tony Thunder have had this conversation the last few weeks about why I'm not watching WWE. Um, uh, is it just because of the T-shirt thing? And, you know, I was, I was telling him, like, no, it's, it's not just because of the T-shirt thing. The T-shirt thing is kind of like that last straw. But, uh, Anthony, what you said about, you know, I can't wait for Vince McMahon to die so that Triple H takes over, that... That's one of the big things for me, uh, why I'm not watching WWE anymore, because I don't want that mentality. What's up, Kristen? Um, it's sort of the same thing with the Detroit Lions, right? Everybody say, man, oh, I can't wait till William Clay Ford dies, or I can't wait till that old lady dies, or they sell the team, and then they'll finally get it right. If I'm waiting for someone to die, for me to be able to enjoy a product, it is it really worth me watching that product? You know what I mean? Like I, I, I really okay. I don't, I don't want to get into that that whole thing again. But yeah, the whole you know waiting on investment man to die thing. Is it is it a little morbid? Yeah. I, I just decided, you know, I wasn't going to watch anymore. Instead of sitting there waiting for a man to die for me to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? But, um, no, but here's the thing. Like, as far as these releases, though, I, I, I mean, it sucks. It definitely sucks. I hate to see anybody, you know, losing their job like this, especially in these times right now. But it, it honestly makes good business sense because you're 
if you're not using these people on TV, you really don't need them there. And some of these people, you get, and, 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 and some of these people, you were literally re-signing just so that they wouldn't go to other companies because now that AEW's out there and uh, Impact is, you know, got to deal with Access Television and Ring of Honor still running. New Japan is expanding, you know, here in the United States. Um, you, you've got any companies, quote unquote, or other companies that are, you know, making a push to be a viable option. WWE signed a lot of people just so they wouldn't leave. Just so that, you know, these other companies wouldn't have anybody to sign. You know what I'm saying? The Revival just got their release a couple of days ago. Um, I forgot which one. I think Dawson had been released previously, but, um, um, God damn it. Why can't I never remember their names? But one of them was released a while ago and the other one was just released uh, a couple of days ago. So now, you know, they're free agents. A lot of people think they're going to AEW. I think they'll end up there, but I think they're going to make a stop at NWA. Oh, NWA is another company you need to watch out for. But, um, as far as like these other companies snatching up these talents, you know, as soon as I saw, even though I haven't confirmed it, I haven't seen it confirmed. I'm just hearing it, you know, being talked about. Um, if Ember Moon is released, Dash Wilder, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank th thank you, Frank. I appreciate it. Um, but if Ember Moon is released, AEW needs to snatch her up quick. Um, Diana Perrazzo is a name that I, I heard that was released too. <laughs> AEW needs to snatch her up quick. Uh, Sarah Logan. I think I think hers was confirmed. They, they, AEW needs uh, women's talent. Yeah, they, def they definitely need a lot of uh, ladies for their roster because they need to expand that that women's division. Uh, wrestlers I pay attention to are Otis, Matt Riddle, and The Undertaker. It's become a glorified comedy show. It's, dude, it's wrestling. WWE's been hard for me to watch for a while. Honestly, if it wasn't for me doing a podcast about wrestling, I probably would have stopped watching WWE a while ago. Um, the, the Kofi mania thing was that that's, that's one of my favorite moments in wrestling history. And I really do appreciate, I got to see that before I kind of walked away from it, but I have not watched WWE. Okay. Confession. And, and I, it's t if Tony Thunder is on here, I know he's going to give me hell for it, but Hey, that's fine. I watched two matches from WrestleMania, two matches. Um, I watched the Boneyard match. I watched that once, and I watched the Fire. F <clears throat> Let's try that again. I watched the Firefly Funhouse match. I probably watched that match about a good five, six times. The Firefly Funhouse match is one of the best things I've seen in wrestling in years. Not just WWE in wrestling. Period. In years, that was great. The Boneyard match was really good too, but the Firefly Funhouse that thing was awesome. <laughs> but. For the rest of it, I won't watch the rest of it, man. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it was getting hard to watch. It's a lot of stuff that, you know, I hear about that I, like, I'm glad I'm not watching that. I'm, I'm glad. Can't wait to see where EC3 ends up. <sighs> okay. First of all, we, get, we got to get back to the world not falling apart before we start. <laughs> You know, putting people in different companies. But honestly, I would like to see EC3 go back to Impact. You know, I know a lot of people automatic reaction is going to be uh, AEW. I heard, I think, one of the co-hosts, Kyle Campbell, he, he said something in the, in the group that he would love to see EC3 and uh, MJF be a tag team. And I can definitely see that. That would definitely be, I think, a, a, I think it could be a great storyline. If, you know, MJL started a faction and had EC3 a part of it, they were tag partners or something like that. I can definitely see that. 
Okay, side note. I don't know if any of y'all... Let me talk a little football real quick. Um, I don't know if any of y'all watch NFL Red Zone every Sunday, but you know, with this whole coronavirus going on, they're re-airing all of the football games from, you know, on the Red Zone. The Red Zone basically shows the games from the 1 o'clock up until, you know, before the 8 o'clock game starts. And, you know, they basically show the best plays as they happen live. So if a team gets into the red zone or close to scoring a touchdown, they'll go to that game. If there's, like, multiple teams in the red zone, they'll have, like, three boxes up showing, you know, games, and they'll go back and forth. So literally, I'm watching this, and they got, they're got they showing the Week 10 games, and it was the first week that Matt Stafford didn't play. And it's about to get ugly. <laughs> um. All right, side. That was a side note, <clears throat> but yeah, EC three. I think I would like to see him go to. I like to see him go back to to Impact. I think he would. I think he would do very well there, going back to kind of where he you know started off. Um, I think that'd be a good get for them. Leo Rush. I like to see Leo Rush, maybe in AEW. I like to see him go back to Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor definitely needs some talent. Uh, Gallows and Anderson, maybe go back to Japan, man. Get back, you know, with the original uh, club members. Do something out there. Um, I think TNA, not a TNA. Um, Ring of Honor would be a good place for them. I don't know if it, you know, not necessarily a long-term thing, but maybe a short-term thing. NWA would be a great spot for Gallows and Anderson. I think that would be very interesting to see them down there. Like I said, I want to see, um, do I think Lana would be released too? No, I really don't. I don't think so. Vince loves... Vince loves blondes, man. Yeah, I'm literally getting text messages right now about this. I'm waiting to find out about get confirmation on Amber. <laughs> Devon's gone too. Shit. Oh. So look, wrestling fans. Let me tell you. Let me, let me let me let me turn this into a real life thing. So we're wrestling fans, right? We tend to live in a little bit of a bubble, you know. We've been shunned by the the normal world. You know, we're looked at as weird, our own little, you know, insulated society. Um, kind of outcast. You know, we they made fun of for loving this wrestling thing. So, you know, what's a lot a lot of times it's, we're in this world of wrestling and nothing else exists. You know, some of us, you know, function in the real world. Some of us don't. Some of us function in our little wrestling bubble. If you have not been taking this coronavirus shit seriously, this is showing you that this shit is real. The fact that WrestleMania was pre-taped, they didn't have WrestleMania, dude. <laughs> I was supposed to go. Well, I wasn't going to Mania, but I was going to Mania a week. They canceled WrestleMania. They are they are releasing. Oh, Mike Kyoto got fired, man. Mike Kyoto's been a part of that crew since 1989. Like him and Shane, uh, were, I think I think it was him. Yeah, I think it was Kyoto and Shane. They were like best friends. They both got started off working on the ring crew, putting you know driving the truck. With the ring, you know, from city to city, putting the ring together. He just got released. Devon Dudley released. It's crazy, man. Anthony, man. Really? <laughs> really?
if it, and first of all, that's fucked up. That's first and foremost. Rusev equals Benoit, Lana equals Nash, and Lashley equals question mark. First of all, that's fucked up. Secondly, you got it wrong. Rusev would be Kevin Sullivan, and Lashley would be Benoit. Because you remember, Chris Benoit took Nancy from Kevin Sullivan. And it was part of the storyline, too. So, so if you're going to do some fucked up shit, at least get your shit together and have it accurate. <laughs> That's fucked up, though. That's really fucked up. I do not condone that. But I'm just saying, if you're going to do some fucked up shit, <laughs> do it the right way. But don't do that. It's fucked up. But just do it right, though, if you do. But don't. But if you do, do it right. Get it accurate. But don't do it. <laughs> um, no, that just threw me all off. <laughs> that shit threw me all off, man. Um, but yeah, if, if you're not taking this coronavirus shit, shit seriously, man, just look at what's happening right now. They, they're firing everybody that they don't need because... They have this. They have to scale this shit down. Tyreek Hill's a beast, man. I'm sorry. That's bro. I said it. Yeah, I, I know you said it. I know you said it, and I know you meant it too. I'm just saying, if you're gonna say it, get it accurate. <laughs> but don't say it because it's, it's not right. But I'm just saying, if you do, <laughs> I have to leave it alone. But um, yeah, man, I had. <sighs> And then, and then here's the thing. There's so many people being released right now. I don't I don't know if there's enough spots for these other companies to pick these people up. I mean, everybody everybody's automatic thought is, you know, A yeah, sign on AEW. He said Rusev because he set up the storyline. I'm, well, I'm just, you know, if you're going to go by, you know, how things played out, Nancy and, and Kevin Sullivan were, I'm pretty sure they were married. And then they had a storyline where Benoit took Nancy from Benoit and it happened in real life. And then they, you know, went on to their dead thing. So that's all I'm saying. But, um, yeah, as far as like where all these guys are going to go, man, I don't know that there's just going to be all these open spots because, I mean, you've been building storylines as far as like, you know, your Ring of Honors, your AEWs, your Impacts, uh, your MLWs, who's, you know, working their way up. Um, I think those are all the companies. New Japan, throw them in there too. Um NWA Power. They they've been building up these these, these storylines and you know been investing it in the guys in the in the girls that they have. That it's hard to just start picking up a whole you know rush of new wrestlers that are you know out there. And definitely you want to get get some of these people because you know they're number one they're talented. Two, they've got that WWE you know brand on them, even though it may not have worked out will Dolph get released Lord knows he wants out so here's the thing man if if this was a normal situation I would say no but right now who knows um I was talking to uh, co-host Kyle I let him know that Mike Kyoto got released the referee and he was like they fired Mike Kyoto he's been there forever and I'm like dude you, you gotta like why, why not release some of these newer referees I'm like because they're not making a lot of money. Um, young lady that we were supposed to have on the show, Aja Pereira, she was wrestling with uh, Evolve. Um, I think she's refereeing for NXT right now. She's the first African-American female referee, so shout out to her. She goes by going by Aja Smith now. But uh, she just got hired a couple months ago. So... I mean, let's just throw some numbers out there. I don't know if these are the real numbers or not, but if Aja Smith is making $80,000 a year to be a referee and Mike Kyoto's making three hundred, well, you know, releasing that 90000 yeah, it's going to help you cut money. 
but getting rid of that three hundred thousand is going to help you a lot more. And now, and you know, Mike Kyoto's been there since nineteen eighty nine. Who knows how much longer Mike Kyoto is going to be there? But you now have Aja Smith, who you know is uh, young in the business, and she's coming up. So when you keep her there, you know, you got her for cheaper, and you have her for longer. With someone like a Dolph Ziggler, I'm pretty sure Dolph Ziggler is making a nice amount of money right now. <clears throat> so it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Dolph Ziggler got released. But at the same time, you can't cut everybody. You got to have some kind of a roster right now, man. So, but I don't know. I mean, Dolph could be on the block, man. I know he's he's worn it out. Yeah, this might be, be the time. And... You know what's funny? I just thought about something. <laughs> I just thought about something I heard on Aaron Anderson's podcast yesterday. So yesterday was the Ask Aaron episode where you you know tweet in or whatever and ask questions to Aaron Anderson. And um, Conrad asked him about the revival. And... I want to say Dash said something to Conrad and said, hey, there's some, some stuff coming up soon. Maybe maybe it was about where they were going, but maybe he knew that there was going to be a lot of, uh, re- you know, a lot of people getting released soon. So we'll see. As long as they don't touch or oh, some Nia Jax, we good. <laughs> um, no, Nia's, I think, I think they're good because they're on TV. I think the people that you see on TV every week are pretty much going to be good. It's the ones that, that don't have story, that haven't had storylines for a while. The ones that, you know, your, your, your main event people, your people that just aren't in their, their plans. I think those are the ones you got to worry about getting cut. Like, I don't. I don't know when the last time Rusev was on TV, but after that whole, you know, cuckhole angle with Liv Morgan being a lesbian and, you know, banging Lana and then them, you know, them backing out of that, I don't remember hearing anything else about Rusev. Like I said, I haven't been watching it, but I haven't heard anything else about Rusev since, it was like December, I think, when all that played out. So, it, it, it surprised me, but it doesn't surprise me. Honestly, I'm kind of happy for Rusev because I feel like now he can go somewhere and have that creative freedom to uh, explore and actually, you know, play out a storyline. You know, AEW would probably be the best place for him. Who knows if he'll end up there. I would love to see Rusev go to Japan. I think that would be very interesting to see him over there in Japan and just work, man. You know, like to see him versus Ishii or... Uh, 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 shit, 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 shit. Makabe? I would love to see that, man. NXT call-ups. See, here, okay, Frank, here, you bring up a great point. Wait, matter of fact, I'm gonna come back and read these other two real quick. You know Orton won it out, too. Man, I don't, I don't see Orton won it out. I think Orton's is a WWE guy forever. Uh, now you can leave, but leave Otis and Tucker alone. That's my boo, man. <laughs> but let me go back to the NXT call-up thing. And mind you, I, I, I haven't been watching. I just you know, going by what I heard. I heard not not Nia Jax. Uh, Bianca Belair got called up, right? <clears throat> and with her being called up. I'm a, I'm afraid of what I thought would happen with her is happening. And I've heard some some other, you know, people talking about it. But what I was afraid of with, with Bianca Belair, it, I'm afraid what I thought was going to happen is happening. And what that is, is that they're basically making her the manager of the Street Profits. Bianca Belair is... I'm going to come back to that, friend. I'm going to come back to that. Bianca Belair is arguably one of the best female 
raw talents to come through that company or through the business in years. The things Bianca Belair can do physically is amazing, right? I also believe Bianca Belair, personality-wise, is one of the best talents to ever <laughs> come through the WWE. To me, the thing with her was always time, putting it together, experience. Like she, she didn't, you know, do the independent circuit. She is a, a WWE Performance Center product. You know, she was a, um, a track athlete before this, and a, 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 a what you call it, a, a fitness uh, model thing, whatever the CrossFit. She was doing CrossFit before this. She never did wrestling, so she just needed the reps. She needed time. And I thought like a year ago, I'm like, I thought it was a little bit too soon for them to really push her and put that NXT title on her. But from what I'm hearing, man, when that Rhea Ripley and, and Charlotte thing was heating up, people wanted Bianca Belair in there too because she was outshining both of them. And... Now that they called her up, I feel like they, they're, they're not going to use it the right way. They're going to have her as a manager for her husband and her husband's friend. She doesn't need to be a valet. She needs to be out there wrestling. But here's the problem. And here's something that I, I've learned, especially after this year, hearing the results from WrestleMania. If your name is not Charlotte, Bailey, Becky Lynch... And to a very, very lesser extent, Sasha Banks. Because Sasha Banks has been screwed over time and time again. But if your name isn't Charlotte, Bailey, Becky Lynch, you're not, you're not getting that spotlight. All three of those ladies have had their WrestleMania moment. Sasha hasn't had a WrestleMania moment yet. If you're not those three ladies, it's like I said, Sasha to a lesser degree, you're not going to be the top... Top woman. The only, the only kind of exceptions is Alexa Bliss, maybe Lacey Evans, because I think Vince is in love with her, tall blonde. But if you're not like Alexa Bliss, I'll say Alexa Bliss, Oscar, even though I felt like they did her wrong a few times. And maybe Nia Jax. Other than that, they ain't really going to do nothing for you. Being caught, like, especially for women, it seems like when you get called up, you, you're never going to get past those, those main three lesser to a step four with Sasha Banks. If you're not one of the horse women, it ain't happening for you. Not to the point where you're at WrestleMania headlining the show. Now, back to the, this call-up thing. You called up Bianca Belair, right? To make her manager of the Street Profits. Okay. Bianca Belair was hot. Sasha Banks is not Sasha Banks. Charlotte is now the NXT Women's Champion. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have her and Rhea Ripley go back and forth, and Rhea takes the title back from her. Okay, and then Sasha goes. Me and then Charlotte goes back to Raw SmackDown where she belongs. Io Shirai is supposed to be getting the next title shot, right? Io Shirai's contract is coming up soon. Are they gonna put the title on Io Shirai to keep her there? Or are they gonna let Charlotte, you know, win it, win that, and then you know get a title to Rhea Ripley later on? We don't know. But I'm saying that to say this: Bianca Belair is no longer on NXT. She's on Raw as a manager of the Street Profits. So you have now taken one of your biggest stars on NXT. You've taken that away and put her on Raw to do really nothing, nothing in ring. Okay. Austin Theory, guy we had on the podcast. I knew this. I knew this guy was, you know, was going to do some great things. I didn't think it would be this quick, but shout out to Austin Theory. 
Austin Theory. You take him from NXT, you put him on Raw. Okay? Garza and Umberto. You took them from NXT, put them on Raw. Okay? If you're looking at NXT right now, Oh, sorry about that. I had a little issue. If you take... You keep taking all these talents from NXT, which is supposed to be the third brand, which is live, and you keep putting them on Raw and SmackDown, NXT, the cover is going to get real bare real quick. Like, and you got to realize this is a different time. This is a different NXT. You're live every single week now. Before they were taping... Uh, four or five shows at a time and then, you know, putting them out at an hour. Now you're doing two hours of live television every single week. So you have to keep these storylines going. If you keep plucking the talent from NXT, you're not going to be able to fill these these two hours of programming every single week with good shows. It's going to basically become the third wheel in the WWE pecking order. SmackDown Raw is always going to be number one. SmackDown is going to be number two. NXT is going to be number three. If it's still a feeder system, it's not going to work. That's why I kept saying that you know WWE needs to go get Evolve, put them on the network, and treat Evolve how they were treating NXT before, as as their development system. That's where you need to pluck your talent from, from Evolve. But and it's climbing right now with them cutting people. They really don't need to be, uh, you know, acquiring any more assets, and they just lost it, XFL, too. But you can't just keep plucking people from NXT to bring up to, you know, put on your main roster. So, yeah, Austin Theory and, and the Forgotten Sons, they got caught up, okay? So, who's next? And are we, are we going to are we gonna give whoever's next the time to, you know, develop? I know... <laughs> I know my man, uh, I think he's going by Michael, B Malcolm Bivens right now. He's, he's got a tag team and the way they were described to me is the Samoan version of AOP. <laughs> so like, like if the Usos and AOP had a had kids, it would be these two guys. I haven't seen them wrestle. I haven't, I just heard about them. Are they going to give them time to develop these guys? That's the question. Uh, Rusev in Japan would be like younger, stronger Bruiser Brody. Yeah, that's what I want to see it, man. I want to see Rusev over there. I just, I, I, even if it's just for a short period of time, I just want to see what it looks like. Nia Jax is a better athlete than all of them. Nia Jax is not a better athlete than Bianca Belair. Nia Jax is a, is a hell of an athlete, though. I'm not denying that. Bianca Belair is one of the Bianca Belair is the Cesaro of the women's division. Cesaro is one of the most freakish athletes that I've seen in wrestling. Bianca Belair, that's Bianca Belair is that for the women. <clears throat> Let's see. Is that Smitty? That's Smitty. Vince is tight. They get to the push. Mandy Rose is a great example. She was in just one of the WWE's hottest stories. There you go. But here's the thing. That's going to be mid-card. But when you're on those big stage, when you're in that big stage, if you're in one of those four big pay-per-views and you go up against one of those horsewomen, highly doubt you're winning it. Especially WrestleMania. Especially WrestleMania. So, I said all that to say this. It's a crazy time in the wrestling business right now, man. I don't know what's going on. Who knows who else is going to get released. Um, to all those wrestlers that have been released, man, uh, keep your heads up. Um, I know it's a crazy time right now. I hope, you know, you guys were able to you know, save up. You hope your finances is all good. But, um. Hopefully, once all this corona blows over, things will pick right back up, which you'll be able to, 
either you get a chance to go back to WWE or you'll be able to go where it is that you, you want to go and, you know, still have a successful career. So um, <clears throat> just know we all thinking about you. And, uh, hey, if you ain't doing nothing tonight, 7 o'clock, we're going to be recording live with my man Sam Adonis, a.k.a. the brother of Corey Graves, even though... <laughs> That's what I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask him that today. Like, is he tired of being, you know, brought up as Corey Gray's brother? But uh <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna talk to him, man, and have a very good conversation with him at seven o'clock today. Seven o'clock. Special day and special time for knockouts with three counts. So make sure you tune back in for that. Uh follow all of our social media, KL3C Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Hey, you're watching this right now, man. Hit that that like button on uh Knockout Three Counts Facebook page. And yeah. We'll see you guys later on tonight. So until then, peace. <laughs>